So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at the Elegoo Mega 2560 project, the most complete ultimate starter kit with tutorial compatible with Arduino IDE. And that package is available on Amazon. I didn't make up that title. That's the title that Elegoo uses on Amazon to describe the kit that we're going to unpack. And I've got the pack right here underneath the drop down camera. And uh, I do want to say that this is the first time I have done a video using uh, OBS Studio. I have a uh, Linux box set up here. It's an old Lenovo. I've installed OBS. I've got a couple of cameras. As you can see, you can actually see the, the pointing down camera here is just connected to this lamp. But what I decided to do was a video uh, to open up this package and share what's inside the Elegoo Arduino Starter Kit for my students. I have students who are starting it, uh, this semester with, um, it's, it's a course in, called Design Thinking and Technology. And one of the things we're going to do is we are going to integrate physical computing into the curriculum. So I thought we would start with this kit. Let's go ahead and take a, a look at the kit itself. Let me just verify that you see this on screen and you do. This is the kit. It is available on Amazon. Uh, there are a couple of kits uh, and right now this kit is at about $40. And when I originally spec this kit out for the class, it was going to be about $54. So it's at a significant savings. I'm hoping the class starts on Monday as of the recording of this video. I'm hoping that when uh, I share this with the students, that price will still be at about the $40. $40 price point, which is awesome. I do also have spec'd out for them another kit, which is a $20 kit that you can see here. This is the Elegoo 2560 project kit that is a basic uh, kit and doesn't include as many uh, gadgets on the inside. So this would be okay, but I'm hoping that they'll want to purchase this kit because of the things we find inside. So that's the kit itself. Let me go ahead and uh, get some things ready for us, bring us back here to uh, my camera and again I am getting used to this so what we're going to do is open this up now full disclaimer and this is kind of important to know I've already done one of these recordings so I have already unpacked this and things are already done but because of some technical issues things weren't recording so my hope is that I will be capturing everything we need for this video. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm just checking everything. We are recording, so now we have this. So as you'll notice, I got a little pointing stick and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, everything out of the box here and uh, see what's inside because students who can't make the session of class where I talk about this at least can come back to this video and watch the um, video to see what is inside. I'm sorry, a little hesitation there because I'm seeing, just making sure everything's still recording. I really don't want to record this for a third time. So let me go ahead and turn it upside down. And when we turn it upside down, again, you'll notice that I've already opened it. But I love this a little uh, seal on the bag. It said, if the seal on the bubble bag is damaged or peeled off, please reject and do not sign this package. Guess what? I'm not going to reject it because I have already opened it. it. It is, the seal is broken, but it all's good. So what we would do is once we get this, from Amazon. We're going to open this and we're going to pull it out of the pack. We're going to place it on the table here and uh, I'll get rid of the glare here when we actually get inside. Uh, if I do this a little bit that will help but you can see we have the the package and the kit and one of the things I really like about this kit uh, is that it does come in this really cool box so that uh, students can keep all of their components uh, organized and together, so that's going to be helpful. And uh, inside, we're going to find that it really has some, some great pieces, features, and accessories. So let's go ahead and open this up. I'm going to do that just as a standard package. The first thing you'll note is that we have this wonderful key here that shows all of the components that are inside, and we'll take a look at each of those as we go. Let me move this back here. Once you open up the kit, the other thing you'll notice is right on top, we have this thank you card here that says, thank you for making this purchase. And uh, here's how you can get support if you need that. We'll place that over here. Oh, there is a, a official Elegoo Facebook and Twitter page. Those uh, are helpful if you're looking for projects and things to do. We also have this most complete starter kit for Mega 2560 CD. So CDs, that's pretty amazing that we have a CD. If I look at the CD though, as you open it up and go on the inside, what you'll find is there uh, is a download link for the majority of the things that are in here. So you can also download that 
probably won't use the CD. We'll probably download everything, but it is handy to have. Uh, this not only includes uh, documentation, but also libraries that you need to attach some of these components to your Arduino. However, most of those are included in the Arduino IDE. So we'll only refer to this when we need it. So let's go back to our camera here. What we'll do is we'll kind of go through com um, compartment by compartment and see what's inside. I'll try and keep everything organized and get it back into place as we're going. First thing that we're going to find is this little piece right here. This is a very teeny tiny component. Uh, this is a, a gyroscopic sensor. So what that means is if you connect an Arduino or a board to this, let's say I have this board here, I connect, have this connected and as I tilt or rotate, the gyroscope will send that signal back to the Arduino and give us uh, the data we need uh, uh, to do something based on where in space that is. So a gyro, right off the bat, we're starting with some pretty good stuff here with the gyro. So let's go back under here. We'll set that aside here. We also have this remote control unit. And we'll pull that out of here. And this is an infrared. This will be familiar with everybody who's seen an infrared TV. Uh, what we can do is we can program our Arduino board to receive these infrared remote signals. And then based on that, it will do something. So remember the key for this course is eventually we're going to be building prototypes of uh, solutions or, or uh, products that solve problems for us, the solutions to those. So you can start to think now, what are some of the ways that we can create prototypes using this, these physical computing components? That's what we're really trying to get to today. So the other thing that we have in here is we have a little LCD display. This is an old liquid crystal display. Uh, it has a couple of lines. Uh, I think it's about, uh, I don't know, 12 or 18 characters. I'll have to fire it up and see. But uh, that will give us a good way to give a display back. And that, that can be text. It's basically alphanumeric characters that we can put in there. So let me go ahead and put those back in there. So there, put this gyroscope back in here. That's pretty cool. Uh, I am going to go ahead and put the remote back in its bag so it doesn't get scuffed up. I would scuffed up. I would recommend you all do the same. Over in this box, first thing we find is a motor. This is a stepper motor. So a stepper motor, what's really neat about that is when used with an encoder or a controller, uh, it will allow you to identify what is the rotational value of that motor and you can control it by degree increments. So you could move the motor one degree, two degrees, you can move it three degrees, four degrees, 15 degrees, you know, whatever you want need to do. So it's used a lot for robotics uh, because again, we get that feedback. So we know how far that motor has turned. So let's go back here. We also have a USB cable. This is for the Arduino itself. I actually have an Arduino uh, Uno that is out. This one did not come with the kit. This is not the Arduino that comes with the kit. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if you wanted to power and uh, send your program to the Arduino, we would take this cable, we would plug it into there, and then we would plug this port into our computer. So it's pretty simple. Shouldn't uh, be any surprises how that works. I'll go ahead and take this Arduino and put it back here. I'm going to take and set this aside. We also have some breadboarding wires. We'll talk about those in class, how you use those. This is mail to mail. We also have a nice strip in here of wires that we can use for uh, pin headers. And so we have our female here, we have our male here. And again, those work really well in conjunction with a breadboard, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. Then inside, we also have this, which is a power connector for the Arduino. So let me go ahead and pull the Arduino that's not, again, not included in the kit. But if you wanted to power this without having it connected to a computer, remember the USB will provide power to the Arduino. But if we plug in here and then add a nine volt battery here, then we can have this Arduino operating independent of a computer. So we can place it in a closet, place it outside, all kinds of really cool things we could do. So we will take and put that back. So that's those are the things in that compartment. Let me go ahead and put everything back the way we found it. Always a good idea to do that so you keep everything organized. And uh, everything fits nicely in here. I thought it was going to be kind of a struggle to get things back in there, but it's it's working well. So the next compartment I want to go to is let's bounce down over here. This is actually a servo. This is a micro servo. So let's pull out the micro servo motor. Uh, servos are used to control mechanical linkages usually with uh, electrical impulses to this. It'll turn, it'll twist. Uh, you use it to automate levers, uh, switches, things, uh, rotational devices. 
And uh, we can talk about that as we go. But you see you also in here have some mechanical components you can connect. This is a very small micro servo. You're not going to be uh, moving a lot of stuff, but it will be a good way to play with that and uh, learn how servos work. So let me go ahead and put that in there. Servos are also nice because you can hook those typically up directly and control them with just a little bit of logic in your programming. You don't need necessarily a board. You can just kind of uh, program it, uh, the steps and the movements of the servo from the program that you are working with. So over here in this next component, we have this device. This uh, device right here is used to sense sound. So you can um, sense how much sound is coming. Uh, you can almost kind of get from which direction it's coming, but it is a, a great device just to sense sound uh, and levels of sound. And then based on those levels of sound, do something uh, with the microcontroller uh, or something attached to the microcontroller. So that is in here as well. We also have the battery. That battery's handy because you remember you know, over here we had our 9 volt battery connector. Let me see if I can pull that out again here. Yes, I can. That's pretty easy. And uh, again, uh, it's nice that they provide a battery. This is actually their own branded battery. I did not know they created their own batteries. So, and then we just clip that right on there, plug that into the Arduino, and then we could have power. So let's get that back here, get that out of the way. Now the next compartment contains something I think most of you will be very familiar with. This is basically a joystick um, controller. So you can see right here, I can move that in all directions. It also comes with a little thumb knob. So if you want to create a little game uh, controller with your Arduino, you can do that. And there is uh, specifically, and I'll show you this one in class, there is a controller, an Arduino that is it resembles a, um, a uh, controller for a game device, like a PlayStation or a Switch, something like that. I don't know if I have it here. Let me see if I might have it laying out here. Uh, I don't, so I will bring that to class with me. I thought I had it laying out. Oh, wait, here it is. I do have it. So hang on a second. Let me uh, change my camera. So here is an Arduino that is designed to look like, this is called the Arduino Explora right here. And this is, it, you know, it kind of looks like a uh, controller for a game machine. You've got, uh, you've got that same joystick device here. You've got the buttons here. This also has a gyroscope built in. It just has a lot of really cool things built into it so that you can do um, some gaming simulations, robotics control, those types of things. You'll notice two headers here on this Arduino. I can also plug in a miniature screen and you can play uh, kind of like old classic 8-bit games if you uh, do the programming right. You see we have a lever here. This is just a type of Arduino. Again, it doesn't come with this kit. I just thought I'd share that with you. I'll throw that back over here. Going back to our kit. So you get a little extra, some bonuses there as we're opening up the kit. If we go in here, what you're going to find here is an ultrasonic sensor. And what happens on this ultrasonic sensor is one of these units, these arrays, will send an ultrasonic sound. It'll bounce, it'll come back in, and it'll read and determine a distance based on how long it takes to, to receive that. It's very simple to set up. It's a four pin header here that you can plug in simply. The code is very easy and the Arduino has the libraries uh, in the IDE to be able to program that. Right here is a servo controller. So if you'll remember this motor right here, if we pull that out, you'll remember that this motor has a little header on it right here. This is the header unit for that or the connector for that particular unit. So we would plug that in here. And then this is our control unit for our servo motor, our stepper motor rather, not our servo, our stepper motor, so that we don't have to construct this circuit on a breadboard to control this motor. So it just makes things easier. And again, there's a library for programming that we can use to make it even easier in the Arduino to control our stepper motor. Uh, again, there are differences between steppers and servos, and we'll get into that later. As we come in here, we have another area here. I really like this piece. This is a clock. Um, and so what I mean by that is when you remove power from your Arduino, so let's say you've got an Arduino and ooh, I kicked, kicked a table leg there. If you um, turn off the power and you've got any type of, kind of time sensitive 
uh, coding in here or a clock, then it's it's dead. It starts from scratch. You have to turn it back on. With this connected, you will have a clock that will remain constant. So even when if it's uh, if you set the time in your program to now and it's set, then it's saved with this. When this is turned off, when you turn it back on, the time will come back from this device. Make sense? It will as we get into it if we need that device. So that's in here. We also have just a basic DC motor. And this is just uh, the, the type of DC motors that you find in a lot of toys um, yeah, that you, you can buy cheaply. But uh, just a DC motor. And you can control a DC motor with an Arduino. It's not, it doesn't provide the feedback that a stepper or a servo motor has, but it's, it's, it has its uses. And we'll talk about that as we go. In this compartment over here, we have a four-digit LED display. We also have in here, if I'm not mistaken, a single. So whatever you can, whatever alphanumeric, alphanumeric characters you can create with those LEDs, you can do that. There's also in here a relay. This is a 5-volt relay, which uh, how a relay works is, let's say you have... Um, an AC device like a lamp and you want to control that with an Arduino. You can't connect AC to DC circuits. It doesn't work. You'll blow something up. But if you have the right relay, then what you can do is have the Arduino send a signal to two pins and then that will activate a relay inside. Typically on relays, you'll hear like, like a click. And when you hear that, then that will activate maybe the circuit on the other side, which could be AC or it could be DC, but it's just a way to, to it's like an electronic switch, so to speak. So that is your relay. We go to our next compartment over here. We're going to have, this is called a PIR, and this is um, a motion sensor module. So it can sense movement of hands or things when it comes into play. It is very easy to use. I've used this uh, to do, um, have some fun, with things like uh, security devices. You want somebody to come close to your desk. As they get closer, then it will trigger the Arduino to do something else. So uh, again, a lot of fun to play with on that. We have another box over here. This is um, a device that will read humidity right here and temperature. So a temperature and humidity reader. That's really kind of kind of cool that that is included in there. And again, the libraries, we set that up and we say, hey, if it reaches a certain temperature, uh, then do this with a program. That's what this would allow you to do. Then inside of this box here, or bag rather, we have a couple of things. We have, first of all, an infrared reader. Now you've got to have the infrared reader or you can't use the infrared control. So the signals that you send from here would be received by this unit right here. And then based on the signal received, the Arduino would do something. So that is the receiver. And then inside here, we have an encoder switch. Let me pull that out. Um, it's, it's like a rotary controller or a rotary um, switch. Uh, so as you turn this, it's, it's detent, so it clicks. So let me see if I can, if you can hear this. I'm not sure. I've got this up next to the mic. I don't think you can hear that, but there are little clicks. Now, this is really handy if you use this in conjunction with the stepper motor that we talked about earlier, that one right there. Each click could send that motor a specific number of degrees. So one click this way would turn that maybe five degrees, that motor five degrees. So that's the feedback that you can get back from this unit that will allow this to work. So there's some really neat things you can do with that. Uh, you can make, even make like a rotary controller for a game. So I don't know if you remember those old uh, breakout games or Pong. Pong's another good one. Um, if anybody is old enough to remember Pong like me, as you move the controllers up and down, those were switches like this. As you moved it up and down, those would move up and down on the screen. So you could create Pong with your Arduino. That is actually a possible thing that you could do. Could you do it with everything in this kit? I'm not sure with that screen, eh, you could maybe do something rudimentary. That would be kind of interesting. Uh, you might be able to do it, but I, I kind of doubt it. We'd need like a, a really nice, uh, like a 240 pixel LCD screen to do something like that. All right, we're getting there. We're about, we're over halfway down. We're going to save this one. We're going to come down here. And uh, this is where I, I'm really pleased with this kit. This kit comes with a lot of things that I would not have expected. Now, this one could be interesting. We could do sort of a Pong game with this. This is an LED array. So it's eight by eight. 
and when lit, these are color LEDs. So I guess you could say, uh, here's a control over here, here's a control over here, and the ball could do this. So we could, we could simulate a, a Pong game, probably with this. It wouldn't be very high resolution. It'd be only be eight pixels by eight pixels, but you could at least simulate it with that. That is a really nice addition to this package, uh, which is another reason why I recommended students get this advanced package because they could do more. This one I'm really excited about and was not even aware this was included in the kit. This is a power supply module for the Arduino. Now, again, we have this piece here, which is uh, a duplicative of what you already have, but you also have a standard USB port if you want to provide power. You have a reset switch here, which uh, reset switches uh, can be found on the, on the board sometimes. And then you just have other various ways that you can provide power. I am not as familiar with this as I should be. I kind of want to take some time with it and see how we can use this. Uh, but this, this looks like this could be a really interesting feature when it comes to some power issues we may have with an Arduino or providing certain types of power with that. Uh, speaking of power, as I put these back in here, let me make sure not to damage. I'm not going to go back to the other camera on this one. Here you go. Here you go. It's a nine volt uh, supply. So obviously we know how this is going to work. We plug that into our Arduino and we're good to go. So uh, going back to our down facing camera, let's go back in here and uh, go over here. This is the Arduino itself. Let me save this for just a minute. This is the the Arduino Mega, and I'm going to talk about why we're using the Mega here in a minute. Uh, just a couple other things inside. We have a fan. Uh, this would be good for the DC motor where it's spinning if you want to create a fan. We have uh, a series of resistors. Resistors are important for many of the projects, especially as we start to talk about things like LEDs. One of the things that uh, uh, many people make a mistake is sometimes they'll take an LED that they're practicing with and they'll just attach it directly to the I.O. ports, but you really need a res resistor in between to protect those. Some LEDs can support it, but the majority of them that you get for hobbyists, they can't. So we'll talk about that and how to protect those and how to know which one you need uh, for that. Also inside here, we have moisture detection. So let's say, for instance, I think I can show you this. Let's, let's just show you an example. So here's my iced tea. Speaking of that, let me grab a drink of iced tea. So let's say I had this here. What I could do is, Let's say I have a, a pump, which there are little water pumps that you can get. I have a couple of those and it pumps water in there until it reaches a certain level. How does it know when it reaches a certain level? This does that. So that water touching those little beads or those little those little legs right there will short circuit that and send a signal back to the Arduino say that water has risen to that level. Let me just get one more of those. That's good. That'll help me get through. So that's a handy um, device for... Uh, prototyping if you've got something to do with water levels or uh, liquid levels. So let's go back here. Uh, let me go ahead and put that back in here. That's kind of a particular piece. I don't want to get that messed up. Um, this one, I really, uh, one of the reasons I really wanted this kit, and this is just for me, but also for students. This is an RFID kit. So inside here, we have the RFID reader. Uh, right here. So this will read the RFID. I think this is what we use to program our RFID devices too. I think it can also program. And then inside here we have a card. So the, the goal here is let's, if you want access to something that's being controlled through the Arduino, we swipe our card and it'll give us access. Or let's say you don't want the card, you want a keychain. You can put this on your keychain. You can swipe that across and then something will happen. And just to give you kind of an example as I'm putting this back into the bag, I did have students in another class uh, that was working with Raspberry Pis and their first project uh, for the Raspberry Pi was to do something unique with it. So one of the students chose to create an RFID uh, controlled lock for their dorm room. So they took exactly these components here uh, use a Raspberry Pi, which is um, different than an Arduino, but similar. I'm not really going to get into what, what the differences are, but you can research that online. But by putting this all together, they were able to create an RFID lock for their dorm room. So they would come up, swipe their card, and it would turn the lock. And they used servo motors to turn the lock. So you're starting to see how all of this works, right? And what was really neat is the students in this program were in a cybersecurity program and uh, the next thing he got to do was challenge his cyber, fellow cybersecurity students to try and break in 
and uh, nobody was able to do that. So he had to de deploy security on his system for that to work. So that was really neat. Okay, let's go back here. Let's say you didn't want to use RFID. You could uh, use this numbered keypad and we can do a pen number, uh, alphanumeric characters. And this can be whatever, even though they're labeled, you can uh, make them whatever you want them to be, but you typically would want them to be what's on here. But that could plug in. And instead of using RFID, we could do a code. Now that's easier to hack, obviously, than RFID, but at least that's an option. And then we have a breadboard. This is a nice breadboard. I really like this breadboard. It uh, seems well constructed, good quality. The, uh, the labeling is good. And a breadboard is used when you want to um, prototype circuitry. You, try, you put everything on the breadboard. You get it working. And then if this is something you want to keep permanently, or let's say you want to mass market, then what you would do is based on this breadboarding, you would go in, you could go into something like Fritzing, which is a CAD software for uh, electronic circuits. And then we could actually burn a PCB or a printed circuit board. Uh, and there's lots of places that will do that for you. And then you can have those circuits uh, soldered onto that green printed circuit board. And then you have your custom electronic circuit board. And so, so this is the way that you prototype those. And you can see all the little holes in there uh, and the colors and the power bands. Uh, and we'll talk about that as we get into the class if you need to use that. So that is the breadboard that comes with it. It's very, very nice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead. There's also a, a smaller breadboard over in this compartment. So I'm gonna show you that. This is a smaller breadboard. So if you have fewer components, you would wanna use this over this larger one right here. So I do like that they provide this little one. And this little one's nice because you can even combine that with this piece, which we'll talk about in a minute, and uh, do some additional prototyping for your circuit. So let me go ahead and uh, put these back in here. And I'm gonna be very careful with this. I do that, this little strip right here is very fragile. So we're gonna be careful with that. I'm gonna take, uh, put this in here. Put this back here. Let's go ahead and put this back the way it was. And then I want to show you the actual Arduino that comes with this kit. Now, again, this is the Ella Goo branded kit. You see that here. So just for comparison, this is what the original Arduino Uno looked like. Um, you'll notice these are what we call I.O. ports. Now, we're going to spend a whole session talking about what everything is on here. And we'll do that later. This is really to talk about what's in your kits that you're going to be using. This is the Mega that comes with it. Now, this one is, is built and constructed and uh, actually has the Arduino branded name. What's really neat about this, though, is that Arduinos are open source, which means this circuit and um, how to build this and all the components are available open source, which means anybody can create their own. So certain brands uh, have done a really good job of creating their own clones, Elegoo being one of them. You can see that here. But you can see they're very similar in color and structure. Uh, this is the Uno, again, the original. This is the Mega. What you notice is the Mega has all of these additional ports right here. See that? Okay, so that lets us connect more devices to the board at one time. So the reason I like to grab the Mega for this class and for any physical computing project where you're unsure is, you can get a lot of stuff connected on here. You might run out of ports, especially with a kit like this, where you have so many different options. You, you probably could fill this up pretty quickly. This one should take you a while, okay? Uh, they're both pretty much identical beyond that. So the, the, uh, the little uh, ARM processor on there, or not the ARM processor, the Atmel processor is basically the same. Um, as a matter of fact, this is the Atmega 2560. This one is the, yeah, they're a little bit different. This one, based on what I know, this one is a little, let me get back to my other camera. The one on the Mega that I have here is just a little bit newer and faster than this one. This is an old, this is an older Arduino Uno. So now just for comparison, here's what's really neat. So this is a Mega. They actually create something called a Nano. This is the Nano. So you can see the difference here. The Mega would have a lot of inputs, outputs, but if you have smaller projects, there is a nano version. You can actually get them even smaller than this. I just happen to have this one handy. I thought I'd show you and you can see the differences. Not as many things on there, but they program basically the same and uh, will still control almost the same number of devices. You're just limited into the number of devices you can. So those are the different types. Again, this is the one that we're We've grabbed with this kit, and it's going to give you a lot of flexibility. I'm really excited about using this one. Uh, this is, I believe, my first 
I mean, I think it is. I think it's my first Mega. I don't think I've ever had a, a, a Mega myself. So um, I'm looking forward to trying out that as well. So let me go ahead and get this back. I would recommend you keep this in the static bag. Uh, not everything you need to do that in. Anything that has a PCB or print circuit board, probably want to keep that in its original package. All right, so we're winding up. Let's go back here to our last uh, comp component here. We already talked about this mini breadboard. We know what that is. This, and I don't know why I did this, so I should just pull this out. Let me pull this back out again. This is for what we call a breadboard. A breadboard is something that you can connect on top of that extends all of your I.O. ports. You can see how that would fit nicely. And after you've prototyped a circuit, if you actually want to solder a circuit and use it on a regular basis, but it's kind of a one-off, it's not one that you're gonna sell. It's just gonna be a one-off, but you know you need that permanently. So let's say you've created some kind of censoring system for your birdhouse. It's a, it's a, for your birdhouse, it senses when a bird lands, it can drop food because it has a servo, it can register humidity and temperature inside. So you can see how we're pulling all those pieces together. You might wanna build that circuit on here, solder it in because this is your one-off, this is yours. You're not gonna sell it, you're not gonna duplicate it, it's just for this one project. This would be the, uh, the breadboard that you could use. So we could get all of our circuitry right on here, get it all soldered in here. And then when we're done, we can just place it right on there and we are good to go. So um, it's really, a, it's neat that we have this. Uh, again, it is a one-off thing. You probably wouldn't use it more than once once you use it, but to have it is a nice feature to have. Okay, so then lastly, the last thing we have is in here. Let me go ahead and use my thing because it is a little difficult and I like that they've placed all of these mini components in another little container because these could easily get lost. So let's see what we have in here. All right so what we have first of all is we have uh, different colored LEDs. Okay you can see those so depending on what you want to do right now we have uh, red, yellow, green. We could do a stoplight that could be fun. Over here these are just white LEDs. Uh, let me go ahead and open that up for you a little bit. These are just white LEDs right here. These are little potentiometers. I really like these because the potentiometers even have a little handle to make it easy. So what you could do is, let me get this one out here. De -de -de -de. I knew this was going to be difficult just because I'm trying to do this live, right? Or not live, but recorded. Uh, and you can see I can place that in there and I can move that potentiometer. A lot of times what people have to do is they have to take a little screwdriver in here and change that and you can still do that but it's nice that they have these little handles so potentiometers are variable resistors so these are 10k so these will go all the way to 10k i highly recommend that if you're trying to use these for specific purpose to get to a specific uh, resistance use an ohm meter and measure what's coming out of there as you make your adjustments so you can do that okay and then over here we have PZO speakers. So PZO speakers will give you blips and bloops. So it's like a beep, beep, something like that. It's not going to give you stereo quality sound. Uh, that is not going to happen. You're not going to get real good quality. But, you know, going back to our example with our Pong game, when the ball hits the paddle, it could go beep. This PZO right here would do that for us. So that's kind of cool, right? That it would do that. All right. And then inside here, we have a capacitor. We have a couple of chips. I'm going to come back to those here in a minute. Uh, we also have in here a little mini diode or capacitor. Let's see what it is this? This is a uh, this is a, a small capacitor. We have some more capacitors in here. These are little micro switches that you can use um, to. Generally, they're used for like little reset buttons. I don't know. It's going to be kind of hard to see, uh, but they make a lot of noise. Listen. So you really know when you press them, which is nice. So those are in there. We have some transistors here. You've all heard of transistors, I'm sure. Uh, transistors are, are like little mini electronic switches, similar to those relays we talked about, but for electronic circuits. And then in here, we have some more capacitors. Capacitors, think of them as like mini power sources. Uh, those are handy. We have this little device here, which is a uh, light sensor. De detects the amount of light. That's handy. Uh, we have a couple of those in here. And then finally, we have in this little box right here, we have this piece. Now, notice this looks like a standard LED, but it has an extra leg or two on it. See that? So what that means is this LED is multicolor. We can change this to, uh, well, not infinite number of colors, but, you know, you're probably talking, well, I don't even want to say, but more than 256, let's say. You can adjust the colors uh, of this to really do something very, very kind of cool. Okay. 
And the other thing that's really nice about those is, oh, it looks like we have two of them in there. That's that's actually very good. We have two of them. Uh, what's really great is you can cycle through that so the, the color could shift from white all the way to a dark blue, right? So you could kind of work through that. And based on your program, it could cycle through and do that. So there you go. There's what's in our little bag here. And I believe that does it. Let's see. We've done that. We've done that. We've done this. Uh, we'll put the Arduino. So that's that's the uh, those are all the components in our kit. Uh, I'll close her up here so we can see it up one more time. This is the most complete starter kit for the Mega 2560 project. And uh, again, uh, we'll be using this in our class and we'll talk more about it during class. Again, this video hopefully is helpful for anybody who maybe missed class, uh, didn't get a chance to see the lecture because we will pretty much do this again in class when you have these in your hands, but you can go back and look at this. And maybe for somebody else who is interested in this kit, now they can see what's in there. So thanks for taking a look at it with me and uh, I will get this posted soon and uh, I'll put all the links to the products in the notes. Oh, oh. I almost forgot. I lied to you. There is two more pieces I forgot to share. I thought there was, hang on, hang on. I need to share these with you. I forgot to forgot to do this. I can't believe it. See, this is what happens when you don't plan, right? Uh, inside this box, let me go back here. There were two chips. Uh, you may have noticed those and wondered why I didn't go over them. I apologize. Uh, I do. I have two chips here. Uh, somehow they've gotten stuck together, which is why you always need a little tool here. Uh, two chips that are very handy. This one is the um, 74HC959. Let me show you what that one does. That is the, and I have a spec sheet here for you so you can see that. This one is for connecting a DC, I'm sorry, this one is for adding additional I.O. to your Arduino. So uh, you could, for instance, uh, create a, a, a system that has only three I.O. ports and you can extend that to about eight with this simple device right here. So uh, again, that IC chip is built in. It is handy to do that. And then this other IC chip, which is a, let's read this. This is a, do, 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 um, if I can get it turned up, so here we go. It's an L293D. This one is used to control uh, your DC motor. So if you wanted to control a DC motor or a stepper motor, this will help you do that. And uh, you can see all kinds of projects that use these. This particular project right here allows you to control this DC motor with this IC chip that you see right here. So those were a couple additional chips. I apologize for uh, not getting those in there. Uh, I meant to do that and I had the spec sheets up and everything and just got ahead of myself. But now you have those. So let me get these two disconnected. Now I think we have covered every single device in the kit. And I can put this back here, put this back here. Let's get this in here. And now let's close our kit up. Let's put that back here. Let's put that here and close it up. And once again, Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll probably do some more of these for the class. And if I think they're of value to uh, anybody uh, out there, I'll go ahead and post those too. So thanks again for uh, watching the unboxing of the Elegoo Mega 2560 Project, the most complete ultimate starter kit with tutorial compatible with Arduino IDE. All right, thanks. Have a great day, everybody.